And we have now officially finished step one of the instructions. Only about 22 more steps to go. So now that I've cut all of these off of the runners, I'm going to make sure they're clean using my art knife here. If there's any uh, flash from where I cut them, just take that off. Looks pretty clean though. Again, you want to use a good pair of nippers because it makes this job so much easier if they come off the runner clean to begin with. And now these go in all the remaining holes, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Heading the same direction. It's good to test fit parts as I was just doing there so that you know things are going to work out before you start doing it. With modern computer designed kits you usually don't get any fit problems but uh, back in the day or with some older kits things that are supposed to fit like pegs going into holes or whatever it might be sometimes just don't work right. And of course you don't want to discover that when you've got glue already on the parts. Now if this one, the previous part is a little bit in the way here, so I gotta just give a little bit of gentle love in order to get that in. There we go. There's one side done, and you can see how we have the alternating lengths of the axle parts on the torsion bars to accommodate the sort of staggered wheel uh, construction of the Tiger tanks. Okay. Now we have B31 and B32 for the win. Okay. Let's see here. So we've got this like this. And 32 goes to the top. So. so another kind of part again where test fitting is really important so that you put the piece into position and know that you're doing it right before you put glue on the pieces. A very small amount of flash on this part. A little bit of parting line here that I'm removing. Parting line is that little ridge that you'll see on parts. Hope this is in focus. See these little ridges here that will be formed sometimes because that's where the top and bottom halves of the mold that form the part came together. Uh, but that shouldn't be visible on the finished thing. So I'm just taking the edge of the knife flat to the part and quickly scraping it away and it comes off very quickly and easily. completes step two. We are now through step two. Now here's an interesting thing that they've got going for us. On step three, uh, frankly I'd like to call up Taklam and ask him exactly what it is I'm supposed to do here because they call for using the jigs and I think what we're trying to do here is just make sure that all of these axles, road wheel axles that we've just installed are in line. So they're showing the jigs being put onto these axles like that. But if you go to the next step, the jigs are nowhere to be seen. And of course, you know, you're not going to have these jigs on, on the final, final product. Uh, since they're nowhere in step four or anything after that until we actually make the tracks in step six, uh, I'm assuming that this just means you want to test it to make sure they're all in the right position at this point. So we'll give that a try. So this, uh, see it shows this jig being put on this side in this way. And it looks like Everybody's lining up okay to me. I mean, they all come through the holes here, so. I don't see any issues on this side. Now let's go over to the other side. And uh, 
looks like all these guys are in good shape too. So you're able to stick the jigs on like that. But I assume that we're also now supposed to just take them back off. So I will do that. So now comes step four, and there's a lot of parts going on in step four. We've got road wheels, uh, both sides, the uh, inner road wheels uh, are gonna go on, uh, four on each side. But before we do that, we have to make the road wheels because they are two halves to each wheel. So, oh boy, parts A19 and A20, eight of each of those. And we have to get all that together now uh, for our mass production. of little wheel bits that we have to clean up. Now it looks like these all came off quite clean. Maybe a little bit of left over here. And off we go. More fun repetitive stuff here. Pretty easy to see how they go together. And there's, wow, <laughs> hardly even any glue on these. So that really fits great. Very snug. All right, now let's get this back apart so I can glue it. There we go. With gluing like this, these are the insides of the wheels and they're not really gonna be visible at all after we finish building the kit. So you don't have to be too uptight about how neat you are when you're gluing the parts together. Whew, okay, we have the first eight of our road wheels completed now. And now we put them on the inner axles, or the little ones, I guess. Right after this break. 20 minutes later. Okay, we are back at it here. And now in preparation for attaching all of these road wheels to the uh, chassis, uh, now we need to get out these little axle caps. Uh, that would be part A9. So it's probably four by four, yep, uh, on these little things here. So we go and grab them. See, that's nine, 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 okay. And there's eight. Of course, the important thing on uh, a Tiger is that you make sure that you get the wheels positioned properly on the inside or the outside. Uh, you'll see here in a moment how uh, you know they get a stagger fit. Uh, but what we're doing right now are the inside road wheels. So these are going to go in with the A20s or the flat sides out. And they're going to go onto the shorter of these axles that we have here. Now, the way this is going to connect, let me take a look here. These caps go on and are rather large. Now, you can see that uh, this cap is going to go over the axle right about here, just on the end. And if we glue this very carefully, then, of course, the wheel would be able to rotate even after the glue has dried. Uh, so if you were going to modify this kit so that it actually had working tracks, then you'd want to make sure, of course, that you didn't get any glue on the inside of the wheel axle itself so that it would be able to rotate. Uh, but now this particular kit, I'm not going to customize it. We're just going to go with the Lincoln length tracks. So there's no need for these wheels really to be able to rotate uh, after the kit is completed. Uh, so we're just going to uh, go ahead and glue them on. So again, flat side to the outside. 
and pointy side to the inside and we're going on the short ones. In fact, we might as well just go ahead and put them all into place before we start putting the caps on. Double check that I have the right side facing out. I do. And now we're going to glue the little caps on. Now I mentioned earlier you should put glue on both sides of the part, but in order to avoid any spillage uh, onto the wheel here that would be seen after the kit's completed, uh, I'm going to not do that. I think we'll be okay. Um, these are also the inner road wheels, so they're going to be, for the most part, covered by the outer road wheels uh, once the kit is completed, or the suspension is completed. over here for a moment. Now there's a couple more call outs in this step four here. We've got to put the uh, idler wheel uh, axles in place and also I guess the cover for the gearbox in the front of the reduction gear housing. Definitely got some excess uh, left over from the gates on this part. Gates are the, the point where the runner and the part come together, where the plastic flows through in the mold. You can see here two of the gates, the leftovers. This is just modeling 101 here as I gently trim these away. On an actual tank, this axle here that we just put in could be adjusted to pivot in various directions, thereby adjusting the tension of the tracks on the tank. And we have now completed step four. And I've made sure that all my wheels can move, although, like I said, in this particular kit, that's not really all that important. And now that we've made eight road wheels, we have ten more to go. Halfway. One eternity later. Okay, we're sort of in the home stretch now on the suspension parts. Uh, I've got these ten more road wheels to go uh, with these little caps. And I'll tell you, finding a gray part when it falls onto gray carpeting is uh, an interesting task. Um, anyhow, let's get the rest of these road wheels on. And then we've got a couple of uh, wheels to go front and back. And we can call it quits on the suspension for now. So off we go. Just going to put all the wheels in place here first before I cap them. And now for the first time, we can see the interesting staggered wheel uh, design that the tiger had. There we go. Hope we've got enough shaft on these to get the caps on. Now these areas are going to be very visible uh, after we uh, after we get the uh, tank completed. So I'm now seeing some flash that I hadn't trimmed before. So I'm going to take care of that. And we're also going to be real careful with the glue in this area because, again, we're going to see this part uh, when everything's done. So we'll put the glue on the caps and then put them into place. These little caps are so light, as you can see, they're trying to stick to the brush, which makes it a lot of fun to manipulate when you're holding the kit in the other hand. Of course, the other thing that you want to be careful about is getting cement on your fingers and then touching the tank. I'm sure anybody who's used cement on a model before has had the unpleasant experience where they left a nasty fingerprint somewhere unfortunate and you don't have much choice except to try to sand it out because it will leave a mark as they say. Okay, there's one side done. 
That's a lot of wheels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wheels on one side of this tank. That's how heavy this thing was. So it needed that many wheels to support its weight. All right, one more side to go. Ooh, there you have it. 18 road wheels. Now, finally, uh, in position on this guy. Now we still have the idler wheels and the drive sprockets to do, so we'll get to that and call it a day. So this is the completion of step five, and we're now on to step six. Okay, we have now completed assembling all of the wheels, sprockets, and gears that are necessary uh, for the suspension of this tank. Ooh, uh, big day. Now, if we take a look at the instructions, you can see that the next step is going to be to build the tracks themselves, and we'll want to talk about that next time uh, as to the strategy for assembling these tracks. Uh, as you can see, once again, they've provided these jigs for us. Uh, so these are going to go here on the jigs temporarily. And we are going to build the tracks. Let's see, there he goes. Fits right on there. This guy fits right on there. And what we're going to do using these guides is assemble the Lincoln Link tracks right around this jig so that the shape is perfect before we take it off and move it onto the tank. But we're going to save that one for next time. We've got all of the wheels in place, and it's looking pretty good. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all in our next episode.